we're going to be talking about what makes a great photograph. Ah, uh, we... yeah. Learn. Sorry, I have deep voice syndrome right now. Oh, God. <laughs> We've talked all afternoon and my voice is getting deeper. <sighs> is that making you guys pay attention more? <laughs> or fall asleep. Or fall asleep. One or the other. Well, we have. We've learned a lot. We've covered yes, focusing. We have. Exposure. Um, exposure. A all lot sorts of, of composition. All sorts of well, we've done it all on the shoots. A, a lot of, of elements. We've we've covered a lot. But what really now that we've got the foundations down, what makes a great photograph? I know you've got this awesome acronym. Man. <laughs> Can't say deeper. <laughs> deeper. Man. Oh yeah. Okay, go. Okay, actually, it's not <laughs> anything sexist or anything like that. It just stands for M A N. And I was trying to think of acronyms that would really help you all out. And I know this one's kind of tacky. Well, it's not woman. Right. We could have made it woman. It'd just be I could longer. have come up with a W and an O. But Wonderful. anyway, tell them what M stands for. Okay, so man stands for M, which is capturing basically the moment, okay? And then we have A, which is the artistic side. And then we have N, which is the narrative. So let's talk about what each of those are. So M, the moment really defines kind of how an image or a great image often captures a really finite moment. I'm talking about things that are a little bit more simple. I love the simple things. It could be, uh, you know, a smile on your child's face. It could be that first kiss down the aisle at a wedding. It could be any of these moments. It could be a sporting moment, that catch, you know. What you're trying to say is just being at the right place at the right time. Absolutely. Capturing that moment and kind of keeping it in a photograph, immortalizing it, whatever that moment might be. So that is one characteristic. And I would say that generally a great photograph has one or more of these characteristics. It doesn't need to have every single one of them. Although if you had every one of them, it would be that much more powerful, right? right? But at least one or more. Number two is the artistic side. Colors, composition, lines, light, so forth. This is basically that kind of the stuff as a photographer that we really get excited about. How we light things, what kind of color theory we're using for the shot, those kind of things makes for great images. And really there are photographers that focus strictly on just that artistic side, right? I mean, they- The graphic elements of it. Yeah, the graphic elements, they focus more on the fine art side and that's great. It makes images very compelling, it makes them awesome. Next, I would say is the narrative, the story. What is the image trying to say? And basically we actually are gonna do a shoot where we go through and we set up our own narrative. And we really have done that throughout all of our shoots, but one in particular, we actually set up a scene where my son steals a cookie from the cookie jar. And that is the actual narrative we're trying to convey. Again, all these things can be you know, grand and, and historical in nature, or they can be very simple things that we just have in our, our daily lives. But these three components, the moment, the artistic side, and the narrative, that MAN acronym, at least that's what I've found really makes up a great photograph. So all this stuff we've been talking about this whole time, very technical, and yet you didn't mention the word technical in the making of a good photograph, which is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can have a photograph that's perfectly sharp, perfectly exposed, everything is right, and still it can be dead emotionally. Yeah, it, we're going for an image that is, is great. And by great, I mean something that's gonna evoke emotion, something that someone's gonna enjoy looking at. And yeah, an image can be technically perfect in every single way, from the exposure to the sharpness to the amount of detail and color, and yet it does nothing for right. the viewer. And on the flip side, an image can break every single technical rule, yet be a great photograph and one that's very compelling. And if you look at historical images, I mean, most historical images would fall into that category right. where they're not particularly sharp. They don't have great you know, color. They don't have uh, perfect focuses. They don't have perfect compositions, they're amazing because of the stories that they tell, because of the narratives, because of those moments that they've captured in, in time. Sometimes they're accidental actually, and yeah. they're showstoppers. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that's why technical, I kind of left out completely of the MAN acronym. We do have kind of a piece of it in the artistry. You can choose your lighting, your color, but that's not kind of the, the focus the of it. The driving force. However, if you know all the basics and you know the technical aspects as we've been teaching, then capturing that moment so that you can work on the show-stopping component makes it a lot easier. Absolutely, and really focusing on, you know, the, the MAN acronym is designed so you focus on the moment, the artistry, the narrative, and you use the technical side to kind of further help all those things. You use it to kind of, well, beef it up, if you will. Right, make it part of your arsenal. Beef up your man. Beef up your man. You like that? That sounds weird, <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> You're in a scene that has no trees present. There's no walls, there's no nothing. It's just 
kind of sad actually that really sounds depressing no trees no nothing just me yeah anyway if you're in that type of a scene well you can do the elbow thing that works great and that's actually my preference but another preference another way that photographers in our studio like to shoot is what I call the elbow shelf. You bring your off camera hand up to your camera shoulder, okay? So my right hand is my camera arm, so I'm gonna bring it up to my right shoulder. Prop the elbow up, place the camera right on top of the elbow, and then you bring it up to your eyepiece. Now, aside from making you look super awesome and making you look like you're shooting stuff that's really far more important than it actually is, it's actually very stable of a method to, to hold your camera, and you can get pretty slow in your shutter speeds. 